Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. I want to first of all give uh, Ron Paul a congratulatory third place finish last night in the Iowa caucus and all. I thought he did very well. And uh, considering the fact that uh, he's in the top three tier and there wasn't but about two or 3,000 votes separating the first place finishers to his third place finish, I thought he did outstanding. And it's just a sign of things to come. But uh, go Ron Paul. But uh, since we started doing the uh, videos for the Cannabis Corner about a year and a half ago, we've covered just about every issue concerning cannabis and the war on drugs and and all the uh, reasons why cannabis should be legal and all. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand why cannabis could be, should be legal and, and why this illegal law is so wrong and so unconstitutionally founded and was also contrived under illegal circumstances and all. But uh, for 40-something years, I've been trying to support the cannabis movement since the early 1970s when they first came out with the Controlled Substance Act and all. We all knew it was wrong back then. We knew that the Nixon and his cronies, that what they were up to and all was crooked and it was an anti-constitutional. And But through the decades and all, we've allowed this uh, brainwashing to go on from our government to the people who don't smoke cannabis. Those of you out there that smoke cannabis and all, you, you understand what we're talking about and you've side with us, I'm sure, on a lot of the issues concerning cannabis and why it should be legal and all that. But there's a lot of people out there that are not connected with the cannabis movement and are not so sure about uh, Ron Paul's stance on the war on drugs and all of that. And the reason being is because they have been brainwashed with decades of lies, decades and decades of untruths. And when you tell people lies long enough, they begin to start believing it. And it gets so ingrained in their brain that it's almost impossible to turn that around in them. But it just takes time and then people really looking at the facts and looking at statistics and all. And that's one thing we've tried to present here on the Cannabis Corner is the statistics and facts that show that most of these things that the government has perpetrated over the last four or five decades has been nothing but lies. And it's been for one reason and one reason only, so they can keep drugs illegal and so that the law enforcement and the justice system and all the crooked lawyers and judges and everything else that prosecute the cases can all keep employed. They are the only ones that benefit from this being illegal, not to mention the drug cartels and you know south of the border. But what we trade off so much by having this illegal law and and making cannabis for sure illegal. Number one, of course, at the top of the list is we're keeping the hemp industry from happening and we could free ourselves from foreign oil dependency and all that. Number two is the violence that's going on and all the unnecessary murders and all that. I mean, there's nobody in their right mind can say that they prefer this over something be illegal, being legal and, and this not occurring. I mean, you, if you really do believe that the war on drugs has done something to stopping the flow of drugs, then you've been asleep and you've been asleep for a long, long time. The, the, the flow has not stopped. All we've done is we've created these monstrous gangs that are ruthless murderers and it's driven the price up of a, of a commodity, a, an herb, a, a textile material, potential textile. It's driven the price up to a level of ridiculousness that now the only places where they're looking at medical marijuana and making it legal, all they can see is dollar signs in their eyes because they're talking about all these tax revenues and all they're going to get. And none of that's going to happen once we make it legal. That's just absurd. But it's our fault for because even no matter how much we cry, no matter how much we want things to turn around and how much we, we, we know, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that cannabis should be legal. I mean, honestly, it has never killed anybody, never sent anybody to the hospital. People don't go out and do crazy things when they smoke pot or they don't go out and knock people over the head so they can supply their habits or anything like that. Most of us could grow our own from what we consume. And so it's, you know, there's, there's just a lot of angles there that we we all know about, and it and you don't have to, you know, you don't have to be smart to understand what that's all about. But it's our fault for electing the elected officials that we continually put in our Congress and in our Senate and our local elections, our governors, president, the whole bit. It's our fault because we've continued to elect these people that have continued to lie to the American people and brainwash them over these issues. And 
and the result is a lot, a lot of pain and suffering, lives lost, people going to jail for smoking pot, I mean, for possessing cannabis. I mean, it's an herb. Get real. And, and when you look at the statistics for the things that we have legal, it's, it makes it even sound even more ridiculous that somebody could go to jail for something like cannabis. Even, even the illicit hardcore drugs, the, the numbers on them and the amount of people that are affected by that are minuscule by comparison when you look at alcohol and cigarettes. So we don't really have, you know, to be these Einsteins to understand this whole issue. We just don't. It's, it's, it's pretty much laid out right in front of us and all. But it's our fault because we haven't gotten behind candidates that understand the, the value of liberty, that understand the Constitution, that understand that this is wrong and that it's been wrong since its inception. Even the people who originally came up with the Marijuana Tax Act were all influenced by big money, the big corporations that could see what was going on with if, when, and what profits they would gain if they put the hemp industry out of business. But they killed this country because if we had the hemp industry in place today, we wouldn't be spending a trillion dollars a year for oil to run our cars. We wouldn't be having to buy all this oil to make all these products that we, that we so hold near and dear to all of us each and, each and every day. We can make all of these from hemp oil and hemp products and all, and at the same time, put people back to work and keep people working and make this country strong again. But it's our fault, like I said, we, because we have failed when we go to the polling places to vote. We keep electing these people who make their, some of these presidential candidates, you know, like George Bush Sr., you know, one of, his, one of his famous sayings was, we're going to stamp out this scourge, and he's talking about drugs. And I mean, they, their entire campaigns and stuff, this, is what, this was one of the trigger points they used, you know, to get votes and all. And it's, it's a blinding of the facts, and it's a brainwashing. And Americans bought it, sadly enough, hook, line, and sinker for a long, long time. But we're finally seeing some people waking up. And we finally have a candidate running for president who's make, made a good showing in the Iowa caucus in third place, and that's Ron Paul. He wants to end the federal prohibition on drugs, put it back, put the control of drugs back to the states and all, like, it, like the Constitution says it's supposed to be. And if we have any type of fairness in our souls, any type of equalization of the facts and, and the comparison of penalty to what what substance people want to possess, then if we're going to punish all of these people for possessing cannabis or using cocaine or smoking marijuana or whatever they want to do, then, then we should really come down again on the cigarettes and alcohol. And that would mean that we never learned anything from prohibition. We knew back then in the 20s that prohibition didn't work. And the main thing that was going on back then is people thought it was an infringement on personal rights that were granted them by being a citizen of the United States. This is no different. This is the modern day prohibition and we've just allowed it to continue and it's propagated through lies. None of the, none of the things that the government's ever published about being detrimental about cannabis and cannabis use has ever come to fruition. In fact, we found out many, many good things about it, many medicinal aspects about it, many social aspects about it, the textile availability that this plant offers and all. <clears throat> we, we send all that into a deep, dark hole when we believe these lies and stuff. And we have a chance this year in 2012 to elect a president that is on the right track, that understands what liberty is all about, that wants to follow the Constitution, that wants to limit our government, that wants to give people their liberties and freedoms back. And this candidate is Ron Paul. He's the only candidate in the Republic. I'm not a Republican. I'm, I can't claim that I'm a Democrat either. I don't, I don't vote for an individual based on their party. I base my vote for that individual on their merit. And I, you know, could care less about the rest of the Republican candidates that are running. To me, they're just, they're just another bit of the same old, same old that we've been seeing out of all the ones that have preceded them, Democrat or Republican, Obama, Clinton, Bush, all, the, all those. We, but we now have a candidate in Ron Paul that his, his sole foundation is based on running the government based on the Constitution, not going into wars that aren't constitutionally based not infringing on people's personal lives and having Big Brother and the government tell us what we can or can't do when it comes down to civil liberties and personal liberties, personal individual freedoms and all. I personally enjoy smoking cannabis. I have never gone out and committed any kind of crime when I, after I've smoked cannabis. I've never had to commit a crime to support my habit. 
I've graduated from college. It never did one time keep me from being able to study my studies. If anything, I could say that it enhanced my studying. It made me more aware, more alert, more, more mind awareness of what was going on with my studies and all. It didn't have anything detrimental at all about it. And the fact that nobody has ever died from cannabis use or gone to the hospital, I mean, that's a pretty powerful statistic. And none of the substances that we have legal today can claim that, even on a small scale, they can't claim that. So what we need to do, we need to get people in office there that do share these ideas with us. And it's not just the young people. They talk about, oh, Ron Paul, you know, he doesn't appeal to the conservatives and all that. Well, I'm conservative. I don't like big government. I don't want government in my business at all. And I don't think that the government has a right to tell us whether or not we can smoke, can or cannot smoke cannabis, and certainly not put us in jail for it if we so choose that. It's a safer pathway to me. To me, using cannabis as, as an herb is way safer than drinking alcohol or doing anything that has to, that comes from the medical field in the way of pharmaceutical drugs. I can tell you that. I have in my entire life, I've avoided those like the plague, and I consider myself a pretty healthy individual. But it is not the government's place to tell us that we cannot use this substance, but we cannot put this herb in our bodies. It's our personal choice. Nobody controls your personal choice. Nobody but you. And that's where we've made our mistakes. We haven't gotten behind the candidates. Instead of getting behind the candidates that share these values with us and all, we've put people in office that are the antithesis of those values. And we can't do that again. We have got to get behind Ron Paul. He is the answer. He's not going, he doesn't want children out there using drugs or anything like that. Certainly not. He wants people to be responsible and act responsible and all that. But he does understand freedom of liberties. And he does understand that what this drug war has caused and the violence and all the gang formation, all the murders south of the border and all this drug enforcement agency interdiction and all, they, they have caused more pain and suffering for more people on this planet than the cartels have combined. And they, they're, the, they're the, the spark that lights the fuse that gets the cartels going. And this is wrong. And the reason that they are so hell-bent about this brainwashing, about all these lies, always referring to cannabis as narcotics, trying to make it as the worst case and all, is because their very livelihood depends on it. And they know that once these substances are legal, they're out of a job. And so, of course, they're going to keep the hype going, and of course, they're going to keep the lies going. But we cannot, be, we cannot succumb to this any longer, folks. It's time to get behind Ron Paul. It's time to tell everybody you know to support this man. And, and not, not just the issue on the war on drugs and, and freedoms of liberty and constitutional. That's just part of it. When you look at, when you look at, a, at the platform that Ron Paul is running on, and, and it's constitutionally based and based on civil liberties and all that, this covers a lot of areas, and this straightens out many, many of the social issues that are plaguing this country today. Not, a, not only in an economic standpoint, but from a social standpoint. And it's totally unnecessary. You can't tell me that you would, that you could, ultra conservatives out there that say that Ron Paul is not electable and all. You can't tell me that you think that this having all of these street gangs and all of this violence and all the border violence that's going on south of the border, on our border, and into this country and all. You cannot tell me that that is 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 better to have that than to have these substances legal and take that away from those people. I'm sorry if you think that way. You should have been ousted out of all office a long time ago, and I'm sorry that the American people have not voted you out, but that's what we need to do. We need to vote these people out that take away from the civil liberties, because when you take away a person's civil liberties and their rights that are granted them in the Constitution, then you begin to debilitate what this country was founded on, what, what the principles of our country are. And your choice, if you don't want to smoke cannabis, if you don't want to do those, that's absolutely fine. You have 100% are okay with that. We don't want you doing anything you don't want to. But we do not think that the federal government on any level should have a right to tell any individual, any citizen that they cannot use this substance or impose any types of laws that infringe upon this. And that's why I support Ron Paul. I think he's a man of reason. He's, he certainly is one that wants a smaller government. He's ready to trim the budget at least a trillion dollars. None of the other candidates are even talking about that and all. He's the only one that has a plan to straighten out not only these social issues, but our economic issues, and to move this country forward and get us out of being the bully around the world. 
So, America, it's time. It's time for us to stop putting these insignificant, do-nothing, boast they're going to do this and they do nothing, and these people that all their platform about is promoting, taking away your civil liberties. Get behind Ron Paul. Everything he speaks of is the truth. Everything he speaks of, you can check his record. His entire record is not, it's non-blemished. And you can't say that about any of those candidates. Most of the other candidates are bomb droppers. They're, they're so concerned about foreign affairs and the least concern is about here at home. Let's, let's make a change. Let's do it here in 2012. Let's put Ron Paul in for president and let's get rid of, when the house rolls around, let's get rid of these people that have those like, like minds that want to take away the freedoms of this country because that is why we are in the shape we're in today is because we have stood back and allowed this to happen. Thank you for joining the Canvas Corner.